everybody. I'm going live a little bit early today because I have some meetings back to back starting at 9 a.m. So <clears throat> won't make my normal time, but I'm excited to be here and to be talking with you about another important topic, which is boundaries and specifically boundaries with kids. So I want to preface this by saying I work a lot with family systems and adults, so I definitely work at, with boundaries and teenagers a lot, but I'm not um, as well versed with kids, although I do, I have training in this as a marriage and family therapist, and I've learned a lot through Dr. Dan Siegel's work. Um, he has a lot of amazing books on parenting kiddos to be emotionally intelligent, and I'm also utilizing what I've learned from Dr. Henry, it's I think Townsend maybe or Cloud? No, it's Cloud. Dr. Henry Cloud and maybe Townsend is, is the other author. Um, but he does a lot of amazing work on boundaries and he has a book called Kids with Boundaries. And so I want to preface this by saying I recommend some of those resources as tools for going deeper into this because I'll talk more generally, but I wanted to answer this question. Um, it's from a person I really care about, and I'm really grateful they asked the question because it's a, it's a great one. This is, this is a, a hard topic. I wanna also say that parenting is just a hard thing for a lot of people, and it can be difficult to find balance in teaching our kids certain things while also creating a safe environment. And uh, there are a lot of different opinions and ideas out there and I think whatever works to bring about emotional health in your family system is good and valid. I also love Dr. Dan Siegel's work on the developing mind because he just talks about what kids need throughout development based on the neurobiology and neuroscience that we have to date. Now we know that we only know a very small percentage about what there is to know about the mind. But I do find brain science very fascinating and developmental science very fascinating when it comes to raising kiddos. And I'm going to I'm going to share just like the context of this question and then go into some of these general ideas and I hope that they're valuable and helpful for you. So what advice do you have um, for helping your children set healthy boundaries but also get the things done that you have to get done? I find that there are times when one of my kids is trying to put up a boundary say they don't want to go to the store because they're tired from being in school all day, but we need food for dinner. And I have to try and help them see the necessity of the situation and not respect the boundary that they, they are trying to vocalize. So first things first, generally speaking, kids need boundaries to be modeled from their parents, especially when they're young. And kids often don't know the rules or the ways of the world. They have a very internalized, developed mind where things kind of revolve around them, and that's exactly where they're supposed to be. But the problem is they don't have the brain to understand, you know, my siblings have other needs or we genuinely have other needs like putting food on the table and we need to go to the store. So their brain is internalizing everything and saying, what is it that I need in this moment? And because of that, they're not really able to set good boundaries yet until they're older, until their brain's a bit more developed and able to empathize and think critically and put themselves in other people's shoes. But they literally do not have the brain mass development to do that. And so as parents, I, I want to give parents permission that when they're younger and up until they're even in like, you know, about 14, 15, 16, kiddos just don't have that theory of mind. And so we have to model boundaries for them. And we have to model, you know, setting the rules and the boundaries of the family system. And so in this situation, I would say, you know, although they are trying to set a boundary or maybe even just vocalizing how they feel in that moment, it's important that the parent still dictates the boundary as far as, you know, we're going to go to the store and this is important for, you know, this is important for our whole family. It's important that we put food on the table and maybe, you know, giving a brief explanation, you don't have to go into too much detail. Um, but I think the thing that is important is to validate their experience, right? And so instead of saying, hey, they set the boundary, it's more about tuning into them and helping them label their emotion because that's, you know, uh, name it to tame it is one of the skills that Dr. Dan Siegel talks about where you might, 
you know, sit there with your kid, you might go eye to eye level and say, I hear you and I see that you're really tired. I see that you're very frustrated or you're very, you're very upset that we have to go to the store. And I know you don't want to do that. And we still have to do that. And I do see you and I acknowledge that you're feeling this way, but we do have to go to the store. Is there any way, you know, maybe you could take a nap in the car on the way to the store, or maybe we could, you know, maybe you could take a nap after we get back from the store, you know, kind of, you know, validating and naming what they're experiencing, and then maybe giving them some reasonable options that are an option for you. So you may have to think about that a little bit before and say, okay, what's a reasonable option given this context where I can still give them a little bit of choice and a little bit of freedom in this matter. Now, sometimes there will be choices we have to make with kids that they're aren't really any choices for them to make and there's not much freedom for them to do other things around it. And in those cases, it's just extra important that we validate their, their emotion and we say, I see you and I hear you and I'm so sorry you're feeling that way. I wish that you weren't so tired. I wish this was at a better time and I hear you and we still have to go to the store, right? So just validating their experience, naming that emotion, helping them build that emotional intelligence by naming it to tame it. Because sometimes simply what kids need is, is they need that structure and they need somebody to say, I see you and I hear you in your emotion right now, even though they're not going to probably get what they want and they're not going to be able to set their own boundaries in that moment. I think this also sets up kids for success later in life because they learn that the different ways of life and that we can't always dictate life based on our specific wants and desires, right? Like, you know, we can't avoid taxes. We can't do things that we have to follow the boundaries of the road and police officers and laws. Um, and so I think, you know, giving kids freedom where we can is important, but we also have to show them that, you know, life doesn't function where we always set our own boundaries or our own rules either. And so helping them emotionally regulate around that is the best thing that we can do because we have to learn that as adults too. And especially when kids are under the age of 15, you know, the adults really show and help kids learn healthy boundaries by setting them themselves and really embodying healthy boundaries in their own life. Um, I know that we want to give kids the ability to start verbalizing and like even giving them, you know, kudos for verbalizing something so well or their feelings and emotions. Um, however, it's ultimately up to us to create boundaries and that does, even though in the moment they react to you, which is what they're supposed to do, they're supposed to get mad, they're supposed to get pissed off, um, and they're supposed to break the boundaries, that's part of being a kid and, and what helps mold them, it's really, it's extra important that we show them how to, um, what the boundaries are and create that structure and safety for them, even when they have those bouts of like feeling or having temper tantrums or not feeling like they get to do what they want, right? Like we are creating the structure and the safety for them. Now, these are just my general thoughts based on the research and what I've learned as a therapist. Um, again, I, I'm not here to say that any parenting method is wrong as long as you are trying to build emotional health with your kids. And I think developmentally, depending on what their age is, this is going to look different over time as they, as they become older. But I will say when it comes to kids setting boundaries for themselves and us learning to respect that as parents, that's typically something that comes a lot later. And in the beginning, we just have to show them and model them what healthy boundaries are because they don't have that theory of mind and ability to empathize and understand that there are other needs and wants out in the world um, of our siblings and our loved ones. So we kind of have to set that for them first and create that safety and structure for their brain to learn what boundaries are. All right, I hope that answers your question. If not, please feel free to reach out, out to me and give me more feedback and questions and I will do my best to um, give you my response based on what I know clinically and through the research. So I love y'all. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Enjoy your weekend and I will tune back in on Monday.